And we're going to go now to our very patient UN Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in Iran, uh, Javed Rehman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'm mindful of the limitations of the time. And I know that uh, I will be presenting my uh, concluding uh, observations. So in this uh, limited uh, intervention, I will be uh, respectful of the time. So um, excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to uh, begin by thanking uh, the Justice for Victims of the 1988 massacres in Iran in particular, Mr. Tahir Bumdara and uh, Hanif Jazeri, and indeed other colleagues for this generous invitation. So I'm very grateful for this opportunity to speak to you. I would like to thank you, um, our esteemed colleagues, for joining us uh, this morning to examine this most tragic, horrific, and painful issue for the victims, the survivors, their families, and their loved ones who are seeking truth, justice, and a closure to this most tragic and gravest incident in Iran's history. We have already heard the most painful testimonies, and people sitting here on my side, these painful testimonies of torture and extreme brutality this has shivered our spines, literally. These survivors deserve a lot of credit, and I pay tribute to them and to the families of the victims and all of the survivors here today. Now, one mayor of seeking justice is to ensure accountability and, to, and an end to the culture of impunity prevalent in the Islamic Republic of Iran. And before I come to this key point, I will say that today is an important day in this struggle for justice for these thousands of victims, their families, and the survivors of the 1988 massacres. Persons, as we, as we have heard, who were subjected to summary and arbitrary executions in 1988, and thousands who became victims of enforced disappearances. So returning to the issue of seeking justice, as has been said, and if you uh, have a look at many of my reports, I have, um, I have focused uh, in several of my reports to the Human Rights Council and to the General Assembly on the issue of ensuring accountability and ending the culture of impunity, which has been and remains prevalent in Iran. As you know, uh, I took over the, this mandate in July of 2018. And since taking over this mandate, uh, one of our principal concerns has been the almost complete absence of accountability and the prevailing culture of impunity in Iranian constitutional legislative and administrative framework. In my report to the United Nations Human Rights Council of March of 2022, after having examined in considerable debate in, and considerable detail the absence of accountability, I informed the council that while accountability for serious human rights violations represents a core obligation of states under international law, this was not the case insofar as Iran was concerned. So there was a complete absence of accountability so far as Iran was concerned. And I noted in my report, and I quote for, for your information what I said to the council, I say, Institutional impunity and the absence of a system for accountability for violations of human rights permeate the political and legal system of the Islamic Republic of Iran. 
the absence of accountability derives from various deficiencies within state structures, including negation of the principles of rule of law and separation of powers, end of quotation. My deep concerns as regards institutional impunity and the absence of a system of accountability, as you know, were sadly once again proven correct with the tragic death in police custody of the morality police of the 22-year-old Gina Masa Amini. Ms. Amini, from the Kurdish minority, died in Tehran on 16th of September, three days after her arrest for allegedly failing to comply with the country's strict rules on women's dress code by wearing what they call it as improper hijab. We are aware that her killing also triggered killings of hundreds of largely peaceful protesters, murders, arbitrary arrests, systematic and forced disappearances, torture, rape and sexual violence, and persecutions, which I have described as crimes against humanity. It was tragic, but not surprising, that the Iranian authorities completely denied any responsibility for the tragic events that have unfolded uh, in Iran since September 2022. However, the recent episodes of what I have said, crimes against humanity, and the prevailing culture of impunity, is a continuum of crimes against humanity and the, and the continuing impunity which has pervaded Iranian legal system, the constitutional framework, the judicial mechanisms, going as far back as at least until the 1979 revolution. And this morning, we have heard how the gravest of human tragedy befell upon certain sections of the Iranian community, in particular the political prisoners and political opposition and those who were ideologically opposed to the then Iranian supreme leader and his regime. Uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, as has been mentioned already, in 1988, thousands of these prisoners were extrajudicially executed pursuant to a fatwa issued by the then supreme leader of Iran and implemented across prisons in the country. There are extreme concerns and indeed overwhelming evidence as we are hearing that serious crimes under international human rights law and under international humanitarian law have been committed. These crimes include crimes against humanity, of torture, of persecution, of murder, of extermination, of enforced disappearances, as well as the crime of genocide. This massacre has been followed, as we've heard, by the state authorities refusing to publicly acknowledge the killings and a failure to disclose the fate of those killed and the location of their remains to the victims' families and subjecting these families to threats, harassment, intimidation and attacks. There has thus been the determination of, a, of the Iranian government to hide these massacres through false narratives and statements, distortion of historical data and active harassment of survivors and family members of the victims, as well as by hiding the evidence, such as the destruction and desecration of mass graves, systematic concealment of the fate of the victims, not providing the location of their remains, or, or not providing family members information about the causes of death is deeply troubling and distressing. Such concealment, in my view, ladies and gentlemen, constitutes enforced disappearances and a crime against humanity. I shall have more to say on this subject, as I've just said to you, um, and I shall reserve my recommendations for my closing remarks. In the meanwhile, I join you in our support for the victims of the 1988 massacres, their families and survivors for our common endeavor 
to demand justice and accountability and an end to the prevailing culture of impunity. Our human, moral and legal values and consciences demand that action has to be taken. I urge the international community to ensure justice as a matter of urgency. As you know, in August 2021, when Mr. Ibrahim Raisi became president of the Islamic Republic of Iran, I immediately raised huge concerns and my distress, my extreme distress. As we have heard this morning, and we no doubt will hear a lot more, uh, about Mr. Raisi's role, involvement, and membership of the Death Commission. Justice demands accountability for the actions of Mr. Raisi and all members of the Death Commission, as well as those who have been involved and who have committed these egregious crimes, these unforgi unforgivable crimes in international law. I urge the international community to act and to act now. Thank you.